What's up, man? It's your big brother, K. Reno. And look, I wanted to talk about something that many of us have had conversations about pretty much all our life because this is a term that we've heard, whether it be in church, whether it be just a general conversation. And that is the concept of someone telling you to love your enemy. And like I said, it goes back. It's in the scriptures and, and, and people will see you in a, in, a, in a state of mind and they'll say, well, no, you have to be, forgive and pray for them and love your enemy. When I think about the word enemy, it's just that. This is this is a, an individual, a group of individuals who mean no good will towards you. They have no good intentions in heart as it relates to you. And you would be making a mistake to be sitting around trying to force yourself or to trick yourself into loving someone who is out to get you. So that is the first mistake that we make. We see people who get their whole family shot up or daughters or sons killed or something terrible happens, a tragedy in the family, and they will stand before the person who did it and say, may God have mercy on your soul and I hope God blesses you and to come into heaven and I forgive you. And they'll say all of these um, ridiculous manner of things to the very person who um, brought them that kind of hardship. That's an enemy. I can't fix myself to wish anything good on my enemy. I had a song where I said, I don't pray for my enemy unless I pray for his head. And I mean that. So we see those types of things and we wonder why we allow ourselves to be uh, to have that th those things impressed and imposed upon us. And like I say, a lot of people will go to scripture. A lot of people say, well, you know, you got to you got to pray for those who curse you. And you know, look, a lot of scriptures been tampered with and changed to alter the interpretation in order to control us. And I'm talking about black people all the way going back to slavery. That's one of the scriptures that was used in order to keep us underfoot. But the truth of the matter is, the very God that people will say, well, hey, man, you know, God wouldn't want you to hold that in your heart. God, he wouldn't want you to, to have that type of fear. That very God that you're telling me about, in those same scriptures, he talks about the, the disdain that he has for his enemies. He talks about what he would do to destroy his enemies. So, if God has anger and, 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 and is upset and ready to go to war with his enemies, we have those same emotions. We have those same feelings. And we have enemies too on this planet. We have enemies internally. We have things within ourselves that we have to go to war with. Are we supposed to love that enemy? So it exists on a physical plane, it exists on a mental and spiritual plane, but in no matter what plane that it exists on, when somebody has placed themselves in the category of being an enemy, there should be no love shown to them. Because while you spending so much time trying to figure out how to be good natured and good hearted towards loving somebody who's out to destroy you. They consider you an enemy also. They're not loving you. So you stay in war mode. Even when they think you're not. So y'all tell me what y'all think about that. Um, leave your comments below. And please subscribe to the channel as we make the uh, head towards the finish line towards 40,000 subscribers and I appreciate all of y'all I appreciate y'all who are consistently um, coming on the channel and um, holla at your big brother K Reno one love man peace